IBTG is an L-lactose mimic or analog, and we use it to trick bacteria into thinking there's lactose around so we can trick them into doing things like making protein for us. The reason why we use IBTG instead of actually using lactose is because, well, the bacteria can't eat it. They can't break it down, and so it stays around, and so the bacteria keep thinking there's lactose around, so more of our protein will hopefully be found. Here's how it works. The basic idea of inducible expression using the lac promoter system, and then we'll get way into the details, is that you stick the genetic instructions for making a protein of interest in front of the regulatory region that bacteria use to decide when to make an enzyme that breaks down lactose. So this protein that takes the sugar lactose and breaks it down for energy use. In this way, when the cells think there's lactose around, they're going to start um, thinking they're making the, the, the enzyme to break down lactose, and instead they're actually going to be making your protein. Now, the reason why this works is because bacteria are only going to make this lactose breaker, this beta-galactosidase, when there's lactose to break and not enough glucose. So in this way, we're able to, only when there's lactose around or something that looks like lactose, only then are they going to actually make the thing of interest, and this allows for inducible expression. So expression or making of the protein on demand. How it works is by taking advantage of this thing called a lac operon. Um, and the enzyme that the, the lactose breaker was talking about, it's called beta-galactosidase or beta-gal. Now, beta-gal is made as part of this lac operon, which is basically just this group of genes that are like regulated at the same time. And so they're all made together. Um, and so this lac operon is going to make the beta galactosidase as well as other genes that are needed in order to do the whole like lactose breakdown and import and all of that good stuff. But the one that we care about is beta galactosidase in this case. So beta-gal, um, as I'll be referring to it, it has a couple functions. It can take this um, sugar molecule lactose, so this disaccharide made up of a glucose molecule and a galactose molecule, and it can hydrolyze it. So it can basically break this bond into glucose and galactose. Now, what it can also do is it can do something called transglycosylation, where basically it just rearranges this molecule um, from lactose to allolactose. Um, and so this can also then get broken down by hydrolysis. But if it doesn't get broken down or before it gets broken down, what it can do is it can actually go and serve a regulatory role. What it does is that it binds to this lac repressor, which is this protein that sits on top of that lac promoter. So the lac promoter is the region of the DNA that is basically going to be where the RNA polymerase is going to bind and get started making messenger RNA. So making the recipe copy from this beta galactosidase gene um, and then and those other ones in the lac operon. Um, and so then that mRNA is made and that mRNA is used to make protein. So the ribosomes travel along it and make the protein. And so if this, but if this lac repressor protein is sitting on top of that promoter, well, now the RNA polymerase can't find the promoter. And so you're not going to get mRNA made and you're not going to get protein made. And so normally the bacteria don't want to waste their energy making these lactose breaker downers. Um, if there's no lactose around, that'd be like a waste of energy. Um, and if there's plenty of glucose around, so they like this glucose better. So if there's glucose, um, they're not going to make the protein either. And so there's um, basically some regulatory things that go on. But this lac repressor protein is going to be blocking this site. And so if we can get this lac repressor protein to fall off, well, now we can get expression of of this beta-galactosidase. And so when there's lactose around, you get some allolactose. And what the allolactose is gonna do is it's going to bind to that lac repressor and cause it to fall off, leading to the expression of the, the beta-gal. Now I'm using beta-gal here because that's what's naturally there. And so you have the expression of things in the lac operon. But really, if you basically, all the information is coming from this lac promoter region. So we can stick anything in front of that lac promoter. And then if we trick the bacteria into thinking that there's lactose around, we can induce the expression of something else, some other protein we're interested in. 
But instead of adding lactose, which those cells could break down, we add this mimic, um, this analog called IPTG or isopropyl beta D1 thiogalactopyranocide. Wow, that was a mouthful. So yeah, we call it IPTG. And the reason why we use IPTG is it because it looks like allolactose and it can still bind to that lactopressor, but it can't be degraded by beta gal, so the level stays steady. It has this thioether bond, which basically it can't be hydrolyzed like the um, it can't be hydrolyzed like we got the hydrolysis of this lactose, and so the beta galactosidase isn't going to be able to break. Um, break the bond, it's not going to be able to break it down. And this is important because if you added lactose or if you added allolactose, well, now the cells can break it down. And so now you have less lactose around. Um, and so if you have less lactose around, well, then that repressor is going to stay bound. And so you get negative feedback and you'd be stopping the production. Whereas by using this IPTG that can't get broken down, well, now this is going to hang around and it's going to lead to stable levels and a longer term expression. And so this is why we often use that, um, this mimic IPTG instead of adding lactose or allolactose. Um, so bottom line, we get this protein produced on demand. Sometimes what we do is we use this kind of like coupled system. If you look, if you see something like um, BL21 DE3, where you're using a T7 promoter system, you actually use this LAC promoter to control the expression of a um, RNA polymerase. But this is RNA polymerase isn't the one that we were talking about before. This is actually going to be a RNA polymerase from a bacteria infecting virus, so a phage. Um, and so this is the T7 phage RNA promoter, um, RNA polymerase. And basically it, it recognizes a different promoter than the bacterial ribosomes. So the bacterial ribosomes are going to recognize um, that LAC promoter and some other promoters, but they're not going to recognize the T7 promoter. So if we put the T7 promoter in front of our gene of interest, well, now that, T7, that gene of interest is going to be controlled by the T7 polymerase. And if we can control the making of the T7 polymerase, well, now we can control the making of our protein. And we can also kind of get the cells to use all of the T7 RNA polymerase to make our one thing rather than having to have our transcripts or mRNA compete with all of the cells own ones. So often you'll see this T7 system used as well. One last note, um, so basically beta-gal is actually made in monomers. So these single chains and those group up into dimers and then um, functional quartets to do these tetramers. So that's just, just a technical note because you know I like to provide all the details. So I hope that helped you understand how we use um, this lack inducible expression system um, to make things on demand and why we use IPTG instead of adding lactose or allolactose.